sitting down at this table, Gorman Bouchard. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you here. very much for been having trying me. to get here, trying to get you here for a long time. You're a filmmaker, a novelist, a screenwriter. What else are you? A uh, dog lover, pizza, a, dog. <laughs> a pizza lover, and an old punk rocker. <laughs> all right. So I, I was reading all about you and making films, and you said you started with Alfred Hitchcock. You, you took mm -hmm. a class. I'm a big fan of his. And if you know his movies, he appeared somewhere yes. in the movie. Do you do the same thing? Uh, on, in the documentaries, unfortunately, yes, because eventually one of my questions needs to be said out loud because otherwise you won't know what's going on. Uh, so yeah, I... Well, that's your signature, then. I, I guess it is, yes. You'll, you'll, you'll hear me ask something at some point. You grew up in Connecticut. Yes. When did you decide, I'm going to make films? I'm going to do documentary films. I'm going to be a screenwriter. I'm going to be a novelist. I mean, there's a lot going on here, Gorman. Well, I knew I, I loved telling stories. I mean, I took a lot of English classes. My senior year in high school, out of nine classes, eight were English-related uh, because it was the only... It was, it was the only subject that I had any interest in. Um, and I was writing short stories back then, and I was starting, I started to work for the Waterbury Republican American, actually. Uh, Great newspaper. Yeah, yes. And um, I remember going to them and saying, they need, I, I basically convinced them, I, my, my sales pitch was, you need me to write music reviews for you. You have no, that, that, that your, your arts department is, is worthless unless you have and me And they said what to you then? They said yes. Okay, so then you started off on, on that career. Yes, um, and in the meantime I started, I, I would go to New York a lot to see shows. I would always go to see a lot of concerts. And I would always see this huge catalog for the New School for Social Research, which is also Parsons. Um, and you could take classes uncredited which I thought was really interesting. And there was this, The Art of Alfred Hitchcock by a, a man named Donald Spotto who had written a book on Hitchcock, which I really liked. And I said, okay, well, let me go take this class. And I just, I fell in love. And then I took a class on Charlie Chaplin, same thing. And I started seeing, well, there's these 16 millimeter production classes, again, uncredited, but I, they were affordable. I mean, so I could take this class for $250 versus, you know, having to pay for college tuition. Um, and I believe I was the first person out of the New School Film Department to make a feature film. Which uh, was? Which, which was a bad horror film that I made in Waterbury in 1983, The name was? Disconnected. Yes. So it was terrible. <laughs> it wasn't terrible. It was a good learning experience. Let's put it that way. <laughs> okay. So you, you make that first film, and yes. then when do you really take this on as a career? Well, after that, I... I, um, I made a horror film called Psychos in Love, which actually became a real cult. It's the only film from the 80s that I really put on my, my resume. Who is in it? Uh, a, a man from Waterbury named Carmen Capobianco, who is this beloved character in Waterbury, and he's hysterical in the film. Uh, and it's about two psycho killers who meet and fall in love. It's well, really a, rom it's a romantic comedy <laughs> more than anything, because the, the horror is so over the top. Uh, I, I remember one person called it, it was the first scream. It was really the first, like, cheesy horror comedy mm -hmm. you know um then i got a four picture deal out of in hollywood which was just a how does that happen uh, they loved psychos in love they wanted to pick it up and unfortunately i end up signing with a company that is completely uh, my, what's the nice way of saying it they just ripped everybody off and and um thankfully they went out of business and i didn't have to finish the deal with them mm -hmm. and i sort of got tired of doing that so I, I i had been writing a long time i started writing books and i wrote my first book the second greatest story ever told um had success as an author n not before that was the first success so so pretty much after after doing after stopping the films i said let me just write and it took me about a year and a half to write the book um, and we sold the movie rights within before the book even came out, and that sort of got me back on that. That doesn't path. happen, Gorman. Normally. Well, it did. <laughs> I know. Good for you. Um, and and through the '90s, I wrote uh, well. I wrote four books in the '90s, and a number of screenplays. We had 26 different options with Hollywood Company. It was optioned by every major studio except for Disney. Um, nothing ever got made. Made money. Very Hollywood. Very hot and, and really frustrating after a while, especially mm -hmm. living here and trying to explain, well, what do you do? Oh, I write screenplays. Well, have I seen anything? No. And it, it's, it's, it becomes very frustrating. So you came back to Connecticut? No, I was, I was, I was writing from here. I was here. always here. I just always, I always just flew back and forth when needed. So you 
have made a living doing films, documentaries. Well, the documentaries are interesting because that fell into my lap. I can't, after the, we now turn it's around the year 2000, I decide I'm really frustrated all these options, nothing made. I'm going to go back and try filmmaking again, filmmaking again. And that basically leads to around the year 2008. I made, I've made now three independent features. And this woman who was making a documentary on my all-time favorite band, The Replacements, big punk band from the 80s in Minneapolis. I was in the movie because she was interviewing a lot of big fans, and I had written about them in one of my books. Um, she's, she writes me one day, day and says, I can't finish this film, but you can. And I started thinking, okay, um, I always wanted to make a documentary, and what better subject than something you're really passionate about? Because you love rock yeah. and roll and And animals. I love this band. And they, uh, and that basically was the start of the documentaries. Are and you making money doing this? We're making money. We're not like, we're not, I'm not buying castles in the sky, but, That's uh, all right. you know, um, because starting with that documentary, something had just, there was a company that was just coming up. It's, coming out uh, and it was called Kickstarter and it was this whole crowdsourcing thing and that was the first film that I kick that I kickstarted and we've done all the films now through Kickstarter or Indiegogo or also there's even a new uh, there's even a new company called Seed and Spark which does nothing but films which I find amazing because I said before we started taping that you and I are probably from a generation where, where we didn't ask people for money. Right. We now live in a generation that says, I'm going to do something cool. Hey, you want to help me do it? So you have funded all of your films on Indiegogo or Kickstarter. Since Color Me Obsessed. So uh, uh, now four rock and roll documentaries, A Dog Named Gucci, our animal abuse documentary, the pizza documentary, and also even one narrative film. Which is amazing. So you mentioned Pizza, a love story. Let's yes. take a look at the trailer of that film. Sally's Happy or Modern. Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the correct answer. You and that's never a perfect want... example of my cameo. Sally's Happy or Modern. Right. You, that's you never want to say. I, I'm sure Connecticut can't wait to see this. It looks so much fun. Take me through what we're going to see in this, in this I, documentary. You're, you're basically going to see the history of pizza uh, from its very beginnings in Italy and how the Sergeant Lock Company started bringing people over from the area of Naples, uh, and they settled in right near where, well, Sergeant Lock is sort of where sports, that sports uh, place is uh, uh, on the waterfront, oh, Ikea, yes. and the, yeah, yep. okay, that's where Sergeant Lock was. Um, so they settled right behind it, Worcester Square. Uh, and how uh, this area, be, you know, th there were so many bakeries and they slowly just became 
I wish I was here then. You know? I wish I was here then. The music yes. in this documentary, done by whom? Dean Falcone, a local legend. Basically, he Dean is 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 to New Haven music and playing in New Haven bands. I mean, it, he is it. I mean, if you've ever if you've played in New Haven in the past thirty years, you've somehow played with Dean. Tell me, for young filmmakers that are going to watch this, mm -hmm. what's your advice to them? How do you get going? Do you, do you go to Indiegogo and Kickstarter? Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't do that if nobody knows who you are. Right. And I, I think, I mean, I think the biggest advice I always give to young filmmakers is forget film school. I, I find that uh, even though I, I ended up going, I, find when I, I found when I got onto a film set, I wasn't prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the first thing to do is start watching movies. I mean, I find so many young filmmakers have no sense of film history. You know, they, they seem to think that film started with Tarantino or maybe Scorsese, wow. you know, but I mean, you ask them about Hitchcock or Chaplin or Godard or, you know, Fellini or, it, and, and it's just blank, a blank look. Are you a vintage guy? Because when you yes. sent me emails <laughs> sent from a vintage <laughs> 1943 rotary phone. Yes. I happen to love that. No. What is that about? I, it just, it, you know, it was better than saying sent from my iPhone, basically. <laughs> and I like the idea that, I like the idea of like an old vintage rotary phone being able to send you an email. So do I. I yeah. just, you know, mm. Plaza 4, <laughs> 5. Oh my God. With, when my grandfather died, I grew up with my grandparents. And of all the things you take from your family members, it's funny you said Plaza because I took his old phone number because it was it was they one of these great old phone numbers that was PL it was from Waterbury it was Plaza and, and, and uh, which is seven five that's so romantic you to know. me now you lost your mom when you were very young yes around 10 years old mm -hmm. does that have any mark on you as to what you're doing today I don't know I don't I don't really well you know in in a, in, a, in a weirder way it did because I grew up with my grandparents and my grandmother had a sister um, and her and her husband loved going to see concerts. So I was 12 years old seeing Rod Stewart and the, and the Faces when that Rod Stewart was, you know, a drunken rock and roll band. I saw Elvis Presley when he was thin at the, the first wow. show back in Madison Square Garden. In the I Anne mean, Margaret days. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I saw, I saw, I, it, 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 she, they sort of gave me the bug of falling in love with rock and roll and music. Um, so I think that that had a lot to do with where I am today. The pizza movie comes out in 2016. You yes. said June, and where's it going to air? It's hopefully the first place. It, it, we always do film festivals first. So, and I'm thinking the first film festival for this will be the, uh, I, I co-run the New Haven Documentary of Film Festival. Because <laughs> I have a lot of spare time. <laughs> <laughs> the, the New Haven Documentary Film Festival with Charles Musser of Yale. And um, this will be our third year. And so I'm assuming that, that I, I'm pretty sure I can get it in. Let's just put it that way. Now you're writing, you're writing a seventh book. Yes. And tell me about more films coming. Well, um, the, the, big, the next big film release is A Dog Named Gucci, which was our uh, animal welfare film, uh, which told a story. Heartbreaking. It, it was a heartbreaking story, but it's a very uh, empowering story because it, it basically told the story of this little dog that was snatched up, uh, beaten, scored it with lighter fluid, setting, set on fire, and this, he, the dog should have never made it through the night. But thanks to this man, this college professor, was standing on his porch and just went into action. And he not only saved the dog, but when the kids who did it only got a slap on the wrist, he worked to change the animal abuse laws in Alabama. It took him six years, but uh, he, 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 they, he made the law a felony. You know, so it became a felony in Alabama to abuse domestic animals. And I, the film really shows you that we all need to be the voice for animals and that every single person can make a difference. Even if it's something as simple as you see this horrible story on your Facebook page, share it. Send it to your, your, your prosecutor. Your, make some noise. Yes, yeah, make some noise. It's very easy in this day and age with social media. What are you most proud of? You've got novels, wow. screenwriting, <laughs> movies, That's a festivals. Tough one. Yeah. What else are you doing? You know, we're coming to, into an age where, gee, I'm, I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, I, it's funny because even like even two weeks ago, was, we were just awarded the ASPCA National Media Award for Gucci. That's terrific. Um, you know, which was a very very proud day. I, in terms of what I'm most proud of, um, I probably. My wife and my dogs. 
is like that was the best decision I've ever made, and 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 without them, I don't know that there's all the, all the other stuff is as good because they've sort of keep me human, keep me grounded, um, make me realize what's important. You get it. You totally get it. Next novel coming is on what? Oh wow! It's it. The next novel coming is a is a collection of short stories that are all intertwined. Um, from a woman's point of view, uh, and and what I, I actually wanted to do something different. I actually wanted to take because I, I I don't think anyone's done it yet. I took m one of my all-time favorite albums and re or deconstructed the album and what made was it. The album? I don't. I prefer not to say. Okay. I prefer all not right. to say until it comes out. Okay. All right. But I, and deconstructed uh, it so that the the so that the chapter titles or the the short story titles are all the same titles as the songs on the record. Very interesting. Bestseller, you think? It's too weird to be a bestseller. I'm happy with a. I'm happy with a cult. You never know. What's you never hit. know, though. You, you never, never know. know. Yes. Well, thanks for coming on. Oh, thanks thank for you letting for us me. pick your brain a little bit, and I can't wait till the pizza movie comes out. Pizza, a love story. Yeah, it will make you hungry. It will. Gorman Bashar, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetracked to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Need to keep locked in the grocery store of the mind. Just to save time, I'll skip right ahead to the nice ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you need me.